Hi, this is Alex and I'm out here in Vietnam at our Ninja Teacher headquarters. And in this video, I want to cover where you should do your TEFL certification. So I'm going to go into the pros and cons of the different locations you could possibly do it in, as well as how that's going to benefit you in terms of saving time and cost, as well as actually landing a good job teaching English abroad. Hi. How are you doing today, Ni? Very good. Um, we may organize a chess competition soon between the companies. Maybe later this week. Cool, I'm brilliant at chess. He's a ninja teacher. How are you doing today, Carl? I just see that you uh, strapped your camera to your wrist. Now I see how Alex does it when he walks down the road. Right, so a lot of people always say, like, aren't you worried your camera will get stolen? Well, first, you know, one's tried to, but I do wrap this strap around my wrist. So if anyone did try to steal it, I would just have a tug of war with them and see who won. <laughs> We're headed to a restaurant that serves cuisine, I think, from Hue. Uh, it's like um, a bit of meat wrapped in egg or some kind of rice paper. Yeah, yeah it's really delicious. We'll show you now. But it's one of our favorite places around here for lunch. Okay, so let me dive into the two main options you have for where you should do your TEFL certification. So I'll be talking specifically about the month-long teaching English certification TEFL courses because I've chatted about the benefits of these previously in other videos. Essentially, doing a month-long course is going to get you the ability and the skill set to actually teach English well and that is what schools are looking for and that's going to maximize your chances of actually landing a good job teaching English. The first option is to do your TEFL course in your home country before you actually fly out to start teaching. Now there's a couple of benefits to this and it can be a good option if you have a TEFL course provider that's near your home where you're currently living. So the first benefit of this is it can actually save you some money if you're living at home while you do the course. So if you can find a provider near you to do the course at, that can be a good option. So you can just live at home and then head over to the course and do it there. And of course it is a month long intensive course so you still have to go and do all the classes and the training. But the nice thing is that you're living at home so that you can focus entirely on doing well and learning the skill sets because it does take a lot of focus and attention and you're developing a new skill set that might require a lot of focus. And by living at home, it can make it quite easy to do that and really get that teaching ability down. Yeah, it just started a rainy night here and you can see out to the pagoda outside our office window and it's uh, really pouring down. The downsides of doing it in your home country though is the course costs can be quite high in western countries. So that's something to think about is it might be a lot more expensive to do it there than out in a cheap country such as Southeast Asia. The second downside is that you're not in the country that you want to find a job in. So it can be a lot harder when you're back home in the US or the UK to land a teaching job Whereas if you're in the country, in Thailand or Vietnam, you know, any of the countries out in Asia, it can be a lot easier to actually land a job and secure a teaching English position. So being in the country really makes a big difference if you want to actually get a good job. Um, of course, schools do hire people who are still abroad, but I think it's even becoming more and more common for schools to just hire someone already in the country. Hello. Chemicals. I've, I've never seen that before. Is it good? It's pretty common in Vietnam. It's a strawberry energy drink. It's pretty good. What are those? Bean cakes? Yeah, they're bean cakes. I like them because um, they taste really hearty and healthy. Egg bun bun. Nom 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 nom. Where's Blake? My teeth are going to get stained red. No 
elbows on the table? Yeah, everything you can imagine under the hook. So the second option is to actually come out to a low cost of living country to do your TEFL certification there. Now there's a number of benefits to this and the first one being is well it is a low living cost country so firstly the actual course is usually cheaper as well as that your living cost while you're doing the course as well as that period after the course where you're landing a job and working before you get your first month's paycheck is going to be a lot less so you basically that's an advantage in terms of the cost factor. Another benefit is that coming out to the country you're going to teach in is something you've got to do anyway and you have to go through that process of adjusting to the country, getting settled in and I think doing a course in the country that lasts a month is actually a great way to acclimatize yourself, get used to the culture and also have other students on the course to get to know and hang out with that are going through a similar experience to you. So that actually makes the transition period of getting settled into that country really good. And this is really the case if you're coming out to Southeast Asia to teach, for example, you could do the course out in Thailand or Cambodia or Vietnam and then very easily go across to one of the other countries afterwards or find a teaching job in the country you did the course in. Uh, Southeast Asia is very cheap to travel around and even if you wanted to get a job in say South Korea or China you're still much closer to those countries when you're out in Southeast Asia so schools also see that you're right there in Asia willing to fly over to those countries to land a job so you're in a great position to find a lot of different teaching jobs once you're out here. As far as cons for doing the course arts in Southeast Asia or another cheap country is that you kind of have to make that big decision and that leap to come out here and save up the money, come out, do a course here and then look for a job afterwards. Of course there are courses with assistance and job placement assistance after the course so really once you're here and you've completed a course there are a lot of options for finding jobs so it's not really something that you need to worry too much about but it is a big decision to make to fly out and just you know leave everything behind and I think that can be scary to some people but if you're gonna do it if you're gonna come out to Asia you might as well come out and do the course here and then you know you're living here you're settling in and then you can find a job afterwards fairly easily compared to back home in the States or the UK or wherever you are. And then of course the other con is that you need to save up a certain amount of money to start that process of coming out, doing the course and then living for a while while you're searching for a job and then working without pay until you receive your first salary. So that can be a bit daunting to think that you have to save up a lot of money and you definitely do need to have a certain amount to get you through that initial period. So what I recommend you budget for is the course. Um, during the course your main cost is going to be living expenses uh, including food. So actually mostly just food because usually the course accommodation is going to be close to the course. You won't have to travel that far. Um, so that's the main thing you got to budget for. And then a month's worth of living costs after the course while you're getting a job, while you're interviewing with schools and once you've secured that job you have to teach for a full month and finance yourself until you get that first month's paycheck. However, it's usually not as expensive as people think and you don't have to save up quite as much as you might imagine. The things you need to budget for is of course the cost of the course, food during that course and then that month's worth of living expenses and we usually recommend the course cost plus um, at least a thousand US dollars. Now that's going to be enough to keep you going during the course for the food costs and that month afterwards where you're looking for a job. Now that's usually enough to cover it. Of course bring more to just be safe and settled in. If you have two thousand US dollars on hand just until you start earning that's probably a safe amount. Uh, but of course if you're you know, strapped for cash, you can just uh, budget as much as you can to get through that period. And then of course you're earning 
uh, teaching English salary, depending on which country in, you're in, that can vary, but there's a lot of uh, good options in terms of teaching positions where you can actually pay back that money very quickly. We're just chatting about living costs here in Vietnam and specifically groceries and eating out. And we're going to do a breakdown in a video soon, but Kyle's got some basic numbers here. So, <laughs> uh, I was saying that groceries were about $30 a week for me. And then I tried to limit my eating out to about $5 or less per day. So that's five times 30, 150 plus 120. About 270 per month on food total. Nice. That's also Pretty good. Kyle's stomach, so if you yes. put it into perspective, maybe the average person is half of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just went to the grocery store the other day and I spent like 200,000 dong on a week's worth of groceries. And maybe when I'm completely out of food, it's like 300,000 dong to 400,000. Damn, that's really good. That's like less than $10 for shopping. I don't know. I really haven't budgeted and I don't cook at all, so I always eat out. Um, but I can budget that for you, and I should budget how much my Uber and Grab cost oh, yeah. as well. So we'll do a nice detailed breakdown soon, but that's just uh, for anyone who's interested in kind of general living costs. So I actually got back from my trip to Thailand now, where we launched our course there. So. I think there's a lot of good options in Southeast Asia and we now have options in Vietnam, Cambodia and Thailand for doing our courses out here. So you know I think that's a great option, um, it's not the only option, you can do your course back home. Uh, but what do you guys think? Where would you like to do your course? What do you think are the pros and cons of doing it in different locations? Uh, let me know, leave a comment below and more videos coming very soon. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful to support the channel and I'll speak to you again in another video very soon. Peace.